Here we're going to be looking at the dollar value of life or retail inventory method and this is where we deal with changes in price levels. And for example here we're going to have a retail a store or retail outlet here and it's going to have a cost here on the merchandise and then they're going to establish here a retail price. That's the price that they're going to be selling at to the customer at. So the first thing we have with this LIFO method here is you're going to have to separate out your beginning inventory from your current period here inventory or current period purchases here. So for our beginning inventory we're going to be looking at it in terms of the beginning here of year 20x2. But remember this beginning inventory here from 20x2 is actually the ending inventory coming in here from 20x1. And when you're dealing with this dollar value of LIFO you have to be looking at a price index. So year 20x1 that's going to be our base year and when you assign it the base year you assign it here at 100%. So what we have, uh, to, uh, we're dealing with here, uh, we in this beginning inventory, that represents a layer of inventory here, and it's a layer here we classify here as year 20x1, and that's $90,000, and it has a price index here of 100. Now, the next thing we have to do is de uh, determine our cost to retail ratio for beginning inventory, and that's the $54,000 cost divided by the retail price of $90,000 gives us a cost to retail ratio here of 60%. Next, looking at our current period here. So we have purchases for the period. We're going to have some markups or markdowns. So we have, or let's come up with our totals here. Now our totals here, that excludes the beginning inventory. The beginning inventory isn't included. So for our cost here, we have a uh, for the period here of $693,000 and then for re at retail here our total here would be $990,000 netting out these amounts here. So our ratio of our cost to retail would be the $693,000 cost divided by the uh, retail amount here of $990,000 gives us a cost to retail ratio here of 70%. Next to determine our ending inventory here at retail again for year 20x2. We took our totals here uh, including the beginning inventory here at cost uh, 693,000 plus our 54,000 gives us 747,000 and then for our retail here uh, that would be that 990,000 amount plus our $90,000 beginning amount here in inventory gives, gives us $1,080,000. So our ending inventory at retail for 20x2 would simply we would subtract out our net sales for the period and let's just say they're $968,000. So our ending inventory here at retail 20x2 would be $112,000. Now what is it? This $112,000 uh, includes a pr it has a price index here let's say of 112. That would be the 20x2 price index. So what we have to do is we have to bring this $112,000 back to the uh, base year. In this case it would be the beginning of the year. So our ending inventory at retail deflated to the base year would be calculated here at uh, using this price index. But let's go first before we do that let's go up and look at the definitions here. So for a dollar value LIFO method you determine increases in inventory in terms of the base year prices. In this case we're looking at the beginning of the year price here since that's our base year. You assume, yes, let's assume we had a price change of 12% increase in this case. You must eliminate this price change to measure the real increase in inventory and you do that here by the increase in inventory is deflated to in this case it's the beginning of the year or the base year and, and it indicates whether an actual increase or decrease in quantity of inventory occurred. So let's go back here and look at again our ending inventory here on a base year here. So we take our ending inventory here at retail 112,000 divided by our price the index of 112 or 1.12 and we're going to come up with our deflated amount here at $100,000. So this ending inventory here um, with the price index or 112,000 is actually worth $100,000 when you bring it back to the base year or the beginning of the year here. So our actual inventory increase and this would be the actual quantity increase here uh, would be our beginning inventory here at retail at the base year uh, prices here that's at $90,000 amount or beginning inventory and then we would subtract that here from the deflated amount here of $100,000 so we get a ending inventory increase and that's actually the quantity increase here in dollars and that would be uh, ten thousand dollars. So uh, we've added a layer here for 20x2 we added a layer of in inventory here based on our increase here from the beginning of the year to the 
base year dollars. We're not looking at the beginning of the year here to the ending inventory at retail because that would be a greater amount. We did, we brought it back here into the base year and we determined that at, we had an actual quantity increase here based on that price index of $10,000. So now, uh, okay, the layer here at 20X2 has a price index of 112%. Now let's go back and let's do our calculation here to determine ending inventory here at LIFO cost. So what we take, our this is our ending inventory, the base year uh, amount here, retail price $100,000, and that would be an ending here at 20X2. So that 20X2 amount here, that's composed of two different layers here in our base year retail prices. 20X1, that was that $90,000 beginning inventory here, and for 20X2, remember that was the actual quantity increase here in dollars of $10,000. So what we have here is um, a total amount here of $100,000. So we have to restate this to base year retail uh, dollars here. So we take our price index, that's the uh, price index that we have here assigned to each one of those layers here, 100% for 20x1, 112% here for 20x2, at times our cost to retail percentage, 60% uh, here for 20x, or for the uh, that uh, first layer here of 90,000, and then 70% here for that next layer here um, times that. So we times these all amount here, are, the base year amount times our index, price index times our uh, cost to retail ratio, and we come up our ending inventory here at LIFO cost. First layer here for 20X1 is 54000 20X2 is $7,840. Total amount here, ending inventory at LIFO cost, $61,840. So these two layers here, they represent the beginning inventory here for 20X3. So the ending inventory here, 20X2, becomes the beginning inventory here at 20X3. Three. And one other thing that we want to look at here is how we, why we assign, we use the 20x2, we had the price index here of 112%. So when an increase in quantities occur, the price increase is based here at the new price index. So that was our new price index, 112%, not the 100%. So that $10,000 amount here, that was priced out here at the new price index of 112%. So the next thing we're going to look at here is uh, any changes. We're going to be looking looking at year 20x3 and we're going to be looking at changes um, in this inventory if we either increase or decrease in our inventory. Now let's look at later year adjustments under this dollar value LIFO retail method. And again, we're dealing with these changing prices. So remember here, we ended up in our example here at the end of 20X2, we ended up with $100,000 in our ending inventory. So the end of 20X2, that ending inventory here becomes the beginning inventory here at 20X3. So let's look at uh, case one here for 20X3. So in this case, we're, we have an increase in inventory here, say from $100,000 to $180,000 thousand dollars so we have eight thousand dollar increase in inventory so we went through all our calculations here we ended up with our ending inventory here at the end of 20x3 to be hundred and eight thousand dollars so what is that comprised of here in our layers of uh, base year retail prices here of our inventory so what we've done here is we've carried over look going up here to our example the 20x1 base year layer of here of ninety thousand and 20x2 of a ten thousand those are carried over here into 20x3 those two amounts but we also also have that extra amount here of $8,000 that we have to account for. So we had the increase here from $100,000 in the beginning of the year to $108,000 at the end of the year. So that gets assigned to our layer here of 20x3 of $8,000. So that accounts for our uh, total in ending inventory here, those amounts. Two layers are brought in here from the beginning uh, or the end of 20x2 um, to the beginning here at 20x3 and then that extra layer here of $8,000. And then you just, again, as we did before, just restate your um, uh, to the base year retail price here to price index times your appropriate layer here and then times your cost to retail ratio that gives your ending inventory here at LIFO cost you can calculate and go through the amounts here but you can see we have three layers of beginning inventory here for 
20x4. So uh, the end of 20x3, they become the beginning inventory here at 20x4. Now let's look at case two here, for example. Again, this is a case where you have a decrease in inventory from $100,000 in the beginning of the year to $96,000 at the end of the year. So we have a $4,000 decrease. Again, we're dealing with this, uh, look, the uh, end of 20 uh, inventory of 20x2 becomes the beginning inventory here of 20x3. And then our ending inventory here in 20x3 was $96,000. So uh, how is that accounted for here in our, in our layers here? And again, we have this first layer here of 20x1 of $90,000. And then we have 20x2. Well, remember, let's go back up to 20x2 here. Uh, in either, you can look at it here. We had a layer here of uh, $10,000 here for 20x2. But because our inventory was reduced here from $100,000 down to $96,000, we have a $4,000 amount that's going to come out of this 20x2 amount here. We're going to use up $4,000 in this 20x2 amount. So um, uh, taking the 10000 here, and then we have that $4,000 amount uh, that we used here, we have to use up, uh, it leaves us with $6,000. So the point that I want to uh, we have to look at here is, so if you have a decrease in inventory quantity for the period, then you subtract the decrease here from the most recent layer. And our most recent layer here was 20x2. We have to subtract it from there. So any further decreases, they just you just work backwards here when you're calculating out your uh, inventory layers that you're going to account for. And then just restate them here at a price index times your cost to retail ratio gives us your ending inventory uh, at the LIFO cost here. And just for this example, you can see here we end up with two layers, our beginning inventory here for 20x4. And you can go through the calculations here if you want, but you can just see how we deal with these things. So we deal with two cases here. We had an increase in our ending inventory over the beginning inventory amount here and how we had to account for those layers. And with that increase, we added an extra layer here to our inventory. And then we looked at the case here, we had a decrease in our inventory. And in that case, we had to peel off or we had to subtract uh, that, that amount of decrease from the most recent inventory layer. And again, that those layers here were carried over from the end of the previous year into the beginning of the uh, this current year.